Pittsburgh. And how many of you have gone to a concert and left with a business idea? Most of us? Probably not. But our Good Things guest today did just that. Joining us to share her story is Miss Wendy Nanny. She is the founder of String Thing Designs from Tupelo. Hey, Wendy. Hey, Rebecca. It's good to finally meet you. I was thumbing through your Facebook uh, page today, and my gosh, girl, you are quite talented at creating uh, your jewelry. So kudos to that. Thank you. But let's go back to the concert that you went to seven years ago. Set the stage for us. Where? Who was on stage? Uh, we went to see Jared Neiman in Birmingham, Alabama. And you just went like a normal concert goer, going to have a good time, enjoy, you know, the music and fellowship with friends and then come back home. Yes. Yes. So what was different about this concert experience? Well, uh, he broke a string on stage and we just happened to be standing right in front of him and he handed me the guitar string and I didn't want to throw it away. So I just wrapped it around my wrist. And then later I thought, well, I wonder if I could turn it into a piece of jewelry, and I did, and the idea just kind of went from there. Is this the first time you'd ever been to a concert, Wendy, where you left with something from the stage? I know many listening to Good Things may have gotten a pick or a piece of a broken, you know, guitar or, a, you know, what's the little drummer thingies? They, the sticks <laughs> they may throw out. <laughs> I mean, so it's not unusual that you may leave with a, with a unique piece, um, you know, of a concert. Right, right. It was the first time I left with a guitar string. Um, I've left with many guitar picks, uh, but never a guitar string um, until later, a few years later, uh, we attended a Brent Cobb show in Memphis and he broke his string on stage. But we knew the manager at the time and he, he ended up giving me his whole set of strings from that show. Oh, that's pretty cool. Okay, so you left, you had the string, and you thought, you know what, I want to try to do something with it other than just set it on a shelf or put it in a drawer, because it does feel like something you can't just throw away if it's an artist that you enjoy. So what did you make out of it? I made just a simple loop. Um, when you buy guitar strings, they already come in the shape of a circle anyways, so I just done a simple circle bracelet out of it. Now, did you get a lot of compliments from friends and family and thought, oh, this is so cool? Or did you yourself just know other people are going to want this? I did get some compliments. Um, looking back at, at my first work, I kind of cringed because I was like, oh, that's, that's not that good. But they enjoyed it, and then it kind of inspired me to work harder and make more intricate designs just off that one piece. Did you, had you been making jewelry of any kind or sort of creative like that, Wendy, prior to making this first bracelet from your guitar string? I did make a little jewelry here and there um, before I started working with guitar strings, um, just your normal bead wire and beads. But um, the guitar string really inspired me to open my creativity and see exactly what designs I could come up with. And let's fast forward this seven years. You now have a thriving, I think it started as a side business, but it looks like you're doing pretty good. I would say it's probably your full-time um, gig now, which is String Thing Designs. So to date, Wendy, it's I mean, actually, what do you do? Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was going to say it's not anything I do full-time. It's just I have two kids. I work a full-time um, office job in Tupelo. Um, this is something that I do um, on the side, but it allows us, me and my kids and my husband, you know, to travel and um, do different markets and see different musicians and things from this. Well, we're putting it out in the future that this will be your full-time <laughs> gig one day, that it will take off and, and soar. If nothing else, it's your full-time passion. It gives you an outlet as well as something, you know, to give to others that they can keep for a lifetime, something to sort of pass down. So where are we at today? What are you making? Like, what is sort of your go-to, your number one seller? What are you doing now? Um, I have some with me. Do you want me to show you? Yeah, People please do. I can see it. I know the, I know yep. the radio can't see it. If but, you are tuned um, into supertalk.fm, you can see uh, Wendy showing us some of her, her designs. Um, one of the main sellers is going to be, um, it's a two-tone piece. It's silver and copper. It's, it's more like a Celtic knot, but it's I call it an infinity design. That's one of the most popular ones. Because you're able and then to I see the two different colors with it. The guitar pick there as well. And it's not yes, just this bracelets. this is an Elvis Presley guitar pick. Right, right. 
Oh, that's pretty interesting. So how do you come across your raw materials? Because I do know it all started with your special guitar string that had a story, which we all love things that have a story for us to be able to share with those who ask about it. So how do you get your donated or find these interesting picks or strings or whatever it may be? Well, it started out, I have a lot of musician friends that play um, it started out with them donating their strings and then kind of word of mouth to other people that play. I feel like if, if you can pick up a guitar and play, you're an artist. I don't just ask for artists in Nashville, artists in other states. I mean, artists local, anywhere. If you play a guitar, if you want to donate a string, I'll, I'll be happy to take them. But I also purchase some strings online um, when I run out of used guitar strings. Do you happen to keep the story with the used ones? Like if it is a local artist, if you make something out of it, when you go to sell it, do you have like a little story with it attached, Wendy, that lets the buyer know maybe whose string or who the artist was that sort of gave you gave you the material? Yes. At Relic's um, Antique Marketplace in Tupelo, um, they, I have a jewelry, I have jewelry there. They have... Um, on some of the back of the earrings and bracelets on one side, they have the name of the artist that donated the strings. Now, how did you wind up with a pick of Elvis Presley's? Well, it's not his actual pick. It come from Graceland, um, but it's got his name on the pick. You can buy the guitar picks in which that is one that I purchased um, that has his name on it. Well, there may be somebody listening to Good Things that actually has a guitar pick of maybe Elvis Presley's or string or some other memorabilia from a concert that they would love to be able to turn into a wearable piece of art. Do you do custom jewelry? I do, and that is my one of my favorite things to do because I've had people contact me that they had a loved one who played guitar, and that loved one may have passed away. And the guitar will sit in the corner, you know, and gather dust. But if they take the strings off, I can turn it into a piece of art for them to wear. So when they're wearing it, they're also to remember, they're also able to remember them by looking at that piece of jewelry. Oh, I love that. Well, how do they get in touch with you, Wendy, if that's something that they would love to connect with you about? Sure, you can find me through Facebook. Uh, Facebook has been a great plug uh, to bring in people who normally wouldn't see me at um, events and markets in the Mississippi area. Um, you can find me on Facebook at Strengthening Designs, or you can send me an email at strengthingdesigns at yahoo.com. Now, you didn't get Elvis's actual pick, but what are some other kind of unique uh, concert pieces that when you got, you're like, oh, this is kind of cool that I'm getting to use their stuff to make jewelry out of? I was at a Dwight Watt show um, in Birmingham, and at the time, his drummer, Adam Swin, had broke a drumstick, and I tried to turn that into a piece of jewelry, and it did not go too well. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, though. Every artist has to try and, try and keep trying again. You'll figure out something to do. I guess wood's a little bit harder of a raw material to work with than the strings or the picks or things like that. And it's not just bracelets. I saw you also do earrings and necklaces. You'll do pretty much whatever maybe the customer wants. Yes, I do. I do earrings, rings, necklaces, bracelets, um, and that's pretty much it. You mentioned your family's gotten the chance to travel, Wendy, with your business, String Thing Designs. Where are some neat festivals you found yourself selling your custom-made jewelry? Uh, probably last year, uh, we went to Scottsboro, Alabama to one of their markets over there. And we was able, we spent all day doing the barbecue festival, ate wonderful food. And then afterwards, there's a canyon, um, not really a canyon, a cave and stuff over there that we were able to visit. My kids were able to see different scenery. I think that's pretty cool. Well, I think it's an inspiring story. I love this idea of taking something, you know, that you have that has meaning to you. I didn't even think about all the guitar players in our families that may not have made it to the big stage, but as you said, Wendy, they pick up a guitar, they're an artist, and that you can turn that into something that you can pass down and keep or just enjoy yourself. So Facebook and it's just string thing designs, correct? Correct. All right, well, if somebody reaches out to you and actually has an Elvis pick, can you turn it into <laughs> a piece of jewelry? You'll have to get back with us, okay? Okay. All righty, thank you for your time. Thank you.
All righty, you guys stick with us. We've got more good things for you coming up next.